All right, problem 89, we have this table that gives the values of the differentiable functions f and g and their derivatives at x equals one. And we're given that h of x equals this whole thing. I'm not gonna read it out, just because I feel sometimes it makes it more confusing, but h of x equals this, then h prime of one equals, okay, so here's the strategy. Um, we wanna find just the equation for h prime in general, and all we gotta do is plug in one for x. So what I like to do, or what I recommend is just multiplying this out first, just so it's easier to work with. So just distributing, just, you know, basic algebra, two times f of x times one, two f of x plus two f of x times g of x plus three plus three g of x. Then we differentiate this. H prime of x equals two times f prime of x plus two, this is using the product rule, two times f prime of x g of x plus two times f of x times g prime of x. The derivative is three is zero, so that doesn't really play an issue, so plus three g prime of x. And then we just evaluate this for x is one. So h prime of one, just plug and chug. Two times f prime of one, given in the table. Two times negative two, plus two times f prime of one. So two times negative two, g of one. So it's times negative three, plus two times f of one, three plus g prime of one, four. Whoa, times four, whoops, times four, plus three times g prime of one times four. Doing the math, negative four plus four, no, negative four, six, negative, tw tw so 12 plus 12 plus, 24 plus 12 again. And I hope I didn't make a mistake. I think we're good. And this equals just 44. So your answer is D. Or 90. The functions f and g are differentiable for all x, f of g of x equals x, and g of f of x equals x. We're given that f of three equals eight and f prime of three is nine. What are the values of g of eight and g prime of eight? Okay, so this basically tells you that g and f are inverses of each other. So since they're inverses of, of, since they're inverses of each other, there is this equation for the derivatives of inverses where the derivative of g of x is simply equal to one over f prime of x. I recommend just to memorize this. This comes in handy with problems like this. You can always derive this and there's usually ways around this in problems, but it usually will be more tedious. So just memorizing this as if, just like how you have to memorize, you know, um, the derivative of, you know, cosine of x is negative sine of x. Just think of it as that, I recommend that. So from here, we can then find what g of eight and g prime of eight is. Now, g of eight, recalling what an inverse is, it, it's, it's not necessarily it's kind of the opposite, but it undoes. So that means that g of eight is the value that you would get. So it's, it's a, this is the value that, this is the value that you put into f that would give you eight. So it's given here. I hope I worded that correctly. But we the output of three, or let me just, f of three is eight. So g of eight is three. That's what the inverse is. Because again, when you apply f and g compositely, it just leaves you with x. They undo each other. So you don't have to actually need the equation. You just need to understand this. So g of eight from that, we can tell you it's three, all right? We wanna find g prime of eight. 
So g prime of eight using this is one over f prime of g of eight. We found g of eight is three. So this is one over f prime of three. So we just find what f prime of three is. F prime of three is one. So this is just one over, no, f prime of three is nine, is what I meant to say. So this is just one over nine. And that's all there is to it. Um, and that just leaves you with E. So again, this is a handy formula to just remember. There's usually not that many, but like two, I would expect on average on every multiple choice section. So um, it makes your life a lot, e makes your lives a lot easier because these problems are actually not that hard once you know this. All right, in the final two, a particle moves along the x-axis so that at so that its velocity at any time, t is greater than or equal to zero, is given by this velocity equation. At t is zero, the particle is, is at position one. What is the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals zero to t equals four? Okay, so what you want to remember about distance is that distance is the absolute value of the velocity function integrated from wherever you're trying to find how is a distance of. So this you can find by integrating the absolute value of the velocity function from zero to four. You actually don't even need to, you actually don't even need to know what its position is at zero because you're all, this right here just tells you how far it traveled on that interval. This doesn't um, play a role in that. And this, luckily, you can enter in a calculator. So, um, go zero to four, zero to four. And in this calculator, the absolute value sign is in this weird spot, the book, the Bible, the Bible of math right there. And then make sure you enter the velocity function in there. So 5x e the negative x minus 1 dx and enter. And there we go. And that's your answer. So the answer is simply d. Now I go, I go, I do a whole, I have a whole video on velocity versus, on the, how velocity is related to distance versus displacement. Simply put, displacement is a change in position over an interval, whereas um, distance um, is the actual amount, you know, you, you um, traveled during an interval. Um, in other words, you have to be careful in these problems because sometimes, um, you you could if you integrate this without taking an absolute value, you could get zero, but that's because the integral just maybe cancels itself out with positive and negative values. But anyways, that's just this, I'm just giving you a very brief explanation. If you really want to look into this, look for my video on velocity versus displacement and distance and all that. Um, and last one. So let f be the function with the first derivative defined by f prime of x equal to sine of x cubed for x between zero and two. At what value of x does f attain its maximum value on interval from zero to two, closed interval from zero to two? Okay, um, so you essentially just have to see like where the derivative is positive and look at the endpoint for once it stops becoming positive. Because when it's positive, the function is increasing. And you wanna basically look for the interval that has the longest duration of increasing values. And since it's zero to two, it's usually gonna be pretty straightforward once you graph it. So let's go to a graph. You wanna graph? the sine of x cubed whoa that's uh that's quite a graph there let's zoom in on this yeah 
Zoom. And okay, now we're getting somewhere. A little bit more. Okay, so zero to two, and again they use your they usually won't make it about like um not being able to like see what those numbers are. So you can see the graph is positive up until this value. Then the graph is negative from here and then it's positive a little bit. But the longest duration of it being positive is clearly from zero to whatever that point is. So let's find what that point is. Let's look for that intercept. Lower bound. The first intercept is 1.465. See, so like from, from zero, let me draw a, some chicken scratch um, sketch here. It's, it's, continuously, it's continuously increasing up to that point. So the function is getting larger and larger and larger until here. After that, it starts decreasing. So the max value will be here because it's getting larger up to here. After that, it starts decreasing. Now, even though there are positive quantities afterwards, um, um, we can tell it's clearly shorter. We can tell from zero to that is much the largest interval that's even possible from zero to two. So the answer is gonna be C. All right, so that's it for the multiple choice section. So I hope that helps, good luck. But let me know if you have any questions or give me any feedback. Don't, don't feel bad about offending me. I want to do my best job at explaining these problems. But good luck, take a break and then maybe try the free response questions after you have a little break.